I've been at this for about two hours now and I'm covered in dust. So I'm on the roof here still and I'm really happy with the way it's coming up. So a bit hard for you to see, but I started off with 320 grit and I've dropped back to 240 grit and then I'll finish it off with 320 grit, 240 being coarser, because I managed to paint a lot of orange peel into this when I was putting the epoxy primer on. I also had some pretty deep scratch, uh, sanding scratches from the paper that I used. I used 40 grit initially and then went over it with 60 and 80 and I don't think I uh, sanded it down enough. So that's okay, they're coming out, it just means a lot more sanding for me. Got a couple of sand through areas here. I uh, don't think I've gone down to the metal anywhere. Uh, but I've gone down to the uh, original paint and that's okay. I'll show you what I'm going to do about that. Now what I wanted to do is show you right now the level that I'm trying to get to. Where are we? So what I'm looking for is tiny little shiny spots. So I doubt if you're going to be able to see it. Oh yeah, actually you can probably see that right there. So what those marks are there that is the unsanded epoxy surrounded by the sanded epoxy. Now it is whisker, whisker, whisker thin, like microscopically thin, but I'm trying to sand off the epoxy until all of those marks disappear so that it is all perfectly smooth. Because to my way of thinking, that's just an opportunity for paint to set, settle into it. And if paint settles into it, actually you can see that under here, that actually looks quite deep when you see it like this. So I'm attempting to sand those out. You can see all the scratch marks there. So that's the 320 grit, sorry, the 240 grit. So when I go over it with 320 grit, then that'll be the amount of scratching that I am happy to re have remain because that is what the paint that I'm using recommends to be painted over the top of so that it's got enough key to stick but not enough that it's going to sink into it and see the scratch marks later. There'll probably be hot debate about this by people that are painters and I've read specifications on lots of different paints and some say go as fine as 600 grit. Uh, I'm going with the recommendations for the paint I'm using which is 320 grit. And in any areas that I do happen to sand through I'll use this 1k epoxy rub through primer and it says that it's, uh, actually I'm not sure if it's on this or if it's on the technical data sheet, uh, it's essentially just for little spots. It's not for preparing a whole surface. It's literally just for little rub throughs that might be as big as say a, a 20 cent piece or a quarter dollar, something like that. So that's what I'll use in those applications. But I try not to sand through because that's a preferred solution. G'day. Well, apologies for my appearance, but that's the point of this particular part of the video. Now, I'm not doing a public health warning or anything like that, but I get skin cancers. In Australia here, we have very strong ultraviolet rays. Um, it's commonly known in Australia, and I'm, I guess other parts of the world as well, but it is commonly known in Australia. And I've worked outdoors for most of my adult life. And as a kid, I used to spend time out there. I'm not a sun worshipper. I don't go to the beach or anything like that. But I get skin cancer. I've had a lot of it. I have a lot removed and I've had a lot burnt off and I've had a lot of surgeries. Well, this is a surgery. It was on the side of my nose. I also had the other side of my nose done at one stage. Excuse the rooster in the background. Um, but again, it's not a public health warning. What I wanted to point out, I don't think a lot of people are aware, or maybe a lot of people are aware that welders, the flash from welders can give you the same effects as um, serious sunburn. And I think a lot of people do know that. But something that took me quite a long time to discover was that I get sunburnt from angle grinding. Uh, when I'm welding, I have a mask on. When I'm angle grinding, I'll have goggles on and usually earmuffs, always earmuffs. But I noticed that I was getting sunburnt on my cheeks and on my face and I couldn't work it out. I thought I always wear my welding mask. And then I realized it was from angle grinding. The same with my arms. I'm not gonna show you my arms. I've been using a cream, a chemo cream on my arms and I've burnt the surface off my arms to try and remove as many of the pre-emergent skin cancers as possible. And they look horrible at the moment, so I'm not gonna show you. Um, I'm pretty sure that's from a lifetime of riding motorbikes. 
outdoor and uh, outdoor work, but also from angle grinding because I quite often wear short slopes. So anyway, I just thought I'd let you know. Um, I'm going to look like this for a little while. You'll see me with some scars there, um, uh, and I apologise for that. I hope it's not too gruesome. Um, but <clears throat> just be aware that angle grinders, welders, and the sun can cause your sunburn. But it's about angle grinders I'm talking about at the moment. Stay safe. I've spent about two days sanding back the Datsun. It's not completely finished, but I've done a fair bit. What I'm going to do today, I am going to move Toxic. I'm going to move these panels outside. I'm going to clear the dust out of here as best I can, which is not going to be great as far as painting conditions go, but I'm going to be painting. Now, again, I'm going to paint the top of the car down to this belt line just here, right the way around, inside, including inside the door jams. And I'm going to paint that, as I said, in the roof colour. I'm not going to mask anywhere that isn't already masked. I'm going to drift the paint down over that body line and then mask up to it when we do the lower colour. So I've got a lot of dust to remove to be able to get it to that stage. And I'm going to get it as prepared as I possibly can, but by no means is this ideal painting conditions. So it's cool here, possibly right on the border of being warm enough. It's about 15 degrees at the moment. I have fast um, hardener for my primer and luckily it's very still so there's not a lot of dust not a lot of wind to stir the dust up but we will get dust in it I have no doubt this is a DIY in the garage paint job so we're going to get what we get but what I can say is these sanding blocks that I've been using they're great really good I could probably do with a slightly bigger range of contours but um, this sort of thing I got it offline, online, however you want to put it. And I also got the loop and roll paper for it. So I've been sanding with 240 and then I've been sanding with 320. I was surprised how expensive this stuff is. $65 for 12 metres. But i got to tell you, it's, it's ceramic and it doesn't seem to clog up really fast and it does a really nice job. So I guess that's what you have to pay for. Anyway... If there's a strobing in the picture at the moment, it's because of my whirly bird. Okay, so I'm going to clean this stuff up, get it out of the way, dust free as much as I can. I've got to do a tiny little bit more sanding around the, the door jam. I'll double check after I've wiped it all down. And if there's anything that I need to, I will. So I probably should show you. Um, it's come up exceptionally well, like really, really well. would be very hard for you to pick it up, but um, this is like beautiful. 320 grit, oh, sorry, yeah, 320 grit sanded down. Um, it's almost like you could polish it. It's come up that well. So, oh, and there's a few sand through areas. This is down to the original paint, original enamel paint. And then there's a few bare metal areas. I'm going to be using uh, this, which I have shown you before. So I'm going to just be touching that up. I actually need to check the drying time on this because if it's too long, then I won't be painting today. So hopefully it's not too long. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so I just downloaded the uh, technical data sheet for this product. And it says that I can wet on wet. So I can paint it. I can denib it if I need to after 10 minutes, as in give it a light rub with um, 500 dry or 800 wet. So I'll probably just use grey scotch bright. And I can't paint it over enamel. So these rub through areas could be a concern so I'm going to have a look in my cupboard and see if I've got anything else in an aerosol that might do the job because I really don't want to go over and re-epoxy this in spots because then I've got to wait for it to dry and sand it and da 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 I prefer just a little aerosol thing that I can go over so hopefully I've got something it's not something I use but I know that I might have something so I'll have a look I've got a bunch of old stuff in the cupboard there I don't use any of this I think I bought this one at one stage and never used it and I bought this one, which I have used. It's a plastic promoter. Um, I'm not going to use any of them because I really don't like aerosol cans, this generic type stuff. I don't know if it's any good for anything else. Don't even know why I keep it. So I did read the, PD, uh, the um, technical data sheets and whatever was available on them. None of them seem to be suitable, so that pleases me. So what I'm doing, I've just found a spot on the car 
that is sanded through. I've given it a clean with wax and grease remover and I'm going to try this on it. Um, now I know that product is great, it's a really good product, I've used it, but I don't know what it's like over these sand throughs on the enamel, which it distinctly says not to use it, so I'm going to trial it. But what I'm going to do, doing it on this area down here, where these sand through areas are, and that um, metal, exposed metal, I'm not painting that today, even if I do get to painting, so I'll test it there and while I'm cleaning up around the place, I'll just keep an eye on what happens there. If it fails, then I'll just sand that off and no, nothing lost. So let's give that a go. Well, I've gone through and I've sanded any little spots and then I've vacuumed the car, I've blown it off, I've then blown it and wiped it with a brand new microfiber cloth and then I have wax and grease removed it with brand new microfiber cloths and I've done that about four times. I did the whole car in the way that I just said but concentrating on the areas that I'm going to paint. Now I haven't done anything about the dust on the floor yet and I'm going to go through and I'm going to vacuum that rather than sweep it and see how that goes. But if I need to, I will sweep it and then I will de-dust the car. I've gone through, and this was some advice I got from, I, I can't remember who it was. It was a YouTube channel. And if I can remember it, then I'll put it up there. But I um, got advice from that YouTube channel that by blowing the car down, with like 70, 80 PSI, and then painting it with say 30, 35 PSI air pressure, then the likelihood is that I will blow all the dust out, as much of the dust out as possible when I'm blowing it with a higher air pressure, so that when I'm painting it with the lower air pressure, it's not gonna be as inclined to stir the dust up. Sounds logical, sounds good in theory. We'll put it to the test. So I'm about to clean this area up. Oh, and on the um, spot spray, be about an hour, probably more ago, that I put it on, and that's it down there. And I intentionally put it on some areas where there was enamel visible, like this, and like this, and a bit of bare metal. And I know that it's good for bare metal, whoops. I know that it's good for bare metal, but I cannot see any fry up, any chemical reaction in the negative at all. So I'm going to chance just doing all these little spots here. And of course, I then need to make the decision. I can either do that just before I paint and do wet on wet, or I can do it and let it dry and then sand it off. And for the dust reasons, I'm not that keen to do that, but we will see. You'll know when I know. I've just given the whole shop a vacuum, and when I say the whole shop, the immediate area, I could go through and go crazy with everything, but I'm not going to. Um, my concerns are dust traveling from nearby across onto the car. Now I'm going to close the doors. There was a little insect on the car. I'm going to close the doors when I spray, um, so I'll have my mask and everything on. But it's clean, it's quite dust free. Just on that, I've mentioned before that I've got concerns about my floor always getting dusty. I bought this product, I haven't put it on yet, but it is specifically for controlling dust, making the concrete harder and controlling dust. So you just spray that straight on. I should do it before this, but I'm not. So we'll give that a go and see if that controls the situation. But, this is as good as it's going to get. It's as clean as it's going to get. I'll close these doors when the time comes. I haven't spot sprayed. I'm going to do that just before I start mixing my paint so that it's got time to flash and then I'm going to wet on wet. Again, I'm only painting down to this body line, so I'm not really concerned about blowing air up off the uh, dust up off the floor onto the car. So I'm just going to take care to try and control the dust situation um, around me and below me. Now above me is another situation, 
but again, I'll try not to disturb it. Not the perfect environment. But what I have tried to do throughout the preparation with this car, I've worn gloves. These are the new gloves that I've got. These ones here, they're really good. Just trying to use this box up at the moment. And I've tried to be as clean as I can. Tried not to get oil from my hands on. Tried not to contaminate the, the garage, the workshop area too much with anything else. Not perfectly, but not too bad. And I've also been reading the product data um, information and speaking to experts. And it's 19 degrees in my shed at the moment. You probably can't see that. How's that, eh? It's 19 degrees Celsius. And I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Actually, yes, I do. It's about um, 66, 65 degrees or something like that. And apparently, two pack doesn't like being sprayed in cold conditions because the chemical reactions just don't work properly. And it's not only about the air temperature, it's about the humidity. It's about 50% humidity today, um, I am told. And it's about the panel temperature. Now, I've got a digital thermometer here and the panel temperature on this roof is about 17 degrees and down here it's about 16 degrees interestingly only a couple of minutes ago it was 19 degrees on the roof um, the sun has probably gone behind the clouds so it will vary a few degrees i particularly waited until this time of day because it was only four degrees at eight o'clock this morning and that's four degrees celsius so that is, uh, in other country talk, that's what, 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty cold. So I'm going to mix the paint, get my gear on, mix the paint, spot spray, not necessarily in that order, and then we will see how this thing goes, eh? Wish me luck. I also should mention that um, I am going to tack cloth off. So I've got an automotive tack cloth here. So I'll do that just before I start spraying. And I have some nice new filters. So unlike what I did with the epoxy, I'm going to be using as much cleanliness as I can with this gear. Um, I'm also changing out the uh, nozzle uh, on my gun, the jet. Um, so this is a 1.3, whereas for the primer, I've been using a 1.8. So one. Just fitting that in, so put the new needle in there. So, yep, this is a yep 1.3 mil, and I will be running an air pressure. I'll have to check, but I think about 28 to 30 psi. But I'll check the technical data sheet, and I'm going to, for most of it, have full. Fan, full open air, and I've already set my trigger so that it gives me full full control there. I've wound it back. Oh, well, I haven't set it. That just contacted. I'm going to take it about an extra quarter of a turn. That should give me full um, control. Sound like I know what I'm talking about, don't I? And I'll put a brand new filter in the gun as well. Also got myself some overalls, some coveralls, which you'll see in a little while. Okay, so I'm kitted up. Look at that, eh? Look like I know what I'm doing. I'm just um, preparing to spot spray those areas that I spoke of. Got my gun set up, filter, etc. And I've got a fan over here. But that's the only door I've got open in the workshop. I've got it open, it's pointing out that way, and what I'm trying to do is extract the overspray out that way. Now, it'll draw it across everything else, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm hoping I can take some of the overspray out, and maybe it'll draw dust that direction as well. We'll see. Uh, it's my form of extraction there. Now, there's probably some of you going to be saying, you know, you're creating an explosive environment. Quite possibly, I don't know. People have said the same thing on forums and people have said they've done it for years. Hopefully they don't explode. If I do, you won't see this video. Uh, wish me luck. Um, I've also got a tack cloth. So, nice new tack cloth. And I've opened it up fully. When you get these things, they come all folded up. 
apparently it's a good idea to let them breathe so that the, um, the stuff that's on it, whatever it is that makes it tacky, um, doesn't just transfer to the surface. If you don't unfold them, apparently that can be an issue. So I say apparently because everything is just advice from others to me. So here we go. Well, that was probably a lesson in what not to do with a tack cloth. I had it hanging on the back of the car, as you saw, airing, so that I you know, didn't contaminate anything. And then I put it over my shoulder so I didn't get paint on it. And then I dropped it on the floor, not once, but twice. So I'm not sure whether I should use it or not when it comes time to paint. It actually doesn't look too bad. Oh, we'll give it a go. But I probably could have painted nearly the whole car with this stuff then. This is spot sprays. I've done spots, but lots of them and joined them all together. So um, hopefully it works. Might put that there so I don't drop it. Now let's mix the paint. Stop talking. Get some work done. Well, I made the decision to use the tack cloth, and I'm glad I did because I didn't denib the um, spot primer as in I didn't sand it because I didn't want to create dust. But what I found that when I was tacking it, it's almost like it denibbed it. It took it from, like it felt a bit rough, like going over a fine sandpaper, to really smooth. So uh, I take that as a win. So I've, I've tack clothed it, I've tack cloth denibbed it, and I have my um, paint set up, ready to go. And I've mixed the paint, I've just left it catalyzing there for a minute. I'm about to put it into the gun, I'll put my mask on and then we'll spray. One little hiccup I did have is that when I've gone to adjust my vapor trap that I have set up, which is also my uh, pressure, um, where I altered my pressure, uh, this has fallen over and my gauge is no longer working. So that's a bit of a kick in the teeth. Um, so I've got to wing it. I'm not an experienced painter, as I've said many times, so I've got to really wing getting my 35 PSI there. So um, I could have really done without that. New gauge in the, in the future. I've got my mask on so it might be hard to hear me. First coat down, not exactly perfect practice, but you can now see it's white. Hopefully you can hear me. I've only got one spot here where I've got some fish eyes that have happened for some reason. Just down in the middle of the camera there. Maybe a couple of bits of dust, but otherwise not too bad. I didn't, I didn't do best practice in the regards that I painted this part very much at the end after I'd done the roof, which will cause overspray drift on other parts, but because it's the first coat, I took it as a, a chance. I hadn't painted across the front there like I had the other areas. The audio is probably dreadful, but hopefully you can pick up what I'm saying. The few lines in it there. I could probably put it on a bit wetter on the roof, but overall I think it's okay. Hey, it's going up pretty good. Okay, about 20 minutes later, just doing part of the cleanup, letting the overspray drift off, and I look up here and it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it. There's a little bit of orange peel along the side. And there might be a little bit of um, dustiness in this pillar, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. This is actually a satin finish, so I don't know if this is as satin as it gets or whether it will dry more satin than this. I've got a fast hardener in this because of the cold weather, um, but when I touch it on the um, 
masking tape errors. It's still a bit tacky. But what I'm actually looking at right at this point in time is that bug right in the middle of my roof. So I'm going to try and get him out without doing any further damage. I just used a folded over bit of masking tape to get him, but unfortunately he'd done a fair bit. So could have done without that, but what do you get, you know? So where are we? That's where he just was. Yep, right there. And that's where he had been. Yep. Get that in the big jobs. Pretty good otherwise. Oh well. What do you do? Okay. I don't know. It's probably an hour since I painted this. Um, it's quite... Um, it's tacky, but nothing will stick into it now. It's a good time to remove any of the masking that's up next to the paint, I believe. So I'm not going to drag the paint, but hopefully I can peel it away from the paint without peeling the paint off the car. I guess one of the risks of doing the primer and then the paint all in one hit is the primer could be stuck to the masking tape and if I peel it I might take the whole lot off so I need to do it carefully. I've run around any contact edges with a razor blade to try and make sure that doesn't happen but let's see. The windscreen and this rear window is the main point. Um, I think everything else is just on the rubber seals, so we'll see. I gotta say, the great unveiling is always fun. It's got a razor blade. Always stay in front of the tape when you're peeling. And what I mean by that is, peel this tape here. It doesn't matter so much here, but when you get up close to the edges, pull the tape like this so the sticky side is facing out, and it cuts it cuts the paint away from the tape. I'll show you when I actually get up to that edge. Just to be careful not to drag anything on this paint. You can see here by taking the bulk of the masking off, it leaves behind that initial initial tape that I put on there. Just gonna be really careful not to touch that bottom lip as well. Now I've still got to go through and paint all this area around the window frame. I'm going to do that, I think, the same colour as the roof. tape on too long and particularly if you put the car out in the sun. It bakes on and you'll have trouble.
Here's my beer, I'll get that with gloves off. I knew when I was masking this that some of the rubber was exposed and some of it was covered um, and some of it already had paint on it from when this was painted previously. Uh, but I think the line that I've left behind is pretty neat even though some of the rubber is painted. It'll crack, but what do you do? Okay, I'm not going to take you through this whole process. There is a little bit of overspray on the rubber just here. I'll go through with a bit of sandpaper and clean that up later. And let's have a look. <coughs> okay, so as I said, I need to paint that strip that goes around the window. And I'll probably do it white. I may not, I'll see. I might do it silver. Still to be decided. But you can see the paint there. I think it's looking pretty good. And this is what I'm talking about with that rubber. Don't bang the car. That's what I'm talking about with that rubber. You can see in here, part of, part of the rubber was painted, part of it wasn't. Um, I could go through there with black paint if I wanted, like even tire black and, and paint the rubber if I was really worried about it, but I don't think I'm going to be. It'll be all right. So the other area that I'll show you before I turn the camera off is um, around here where the windscreen joins the rubber you can see this line through here I've gone through and I've just very very carefully cut around there with a razor blade just so that I don't peel the paint off when I take the um, mask off and you have to be very careful when you're sanding to ensure that you actually get right into those edges to sand them because if that part is smooth and not sanded that's when you got to peel your paint off taking the mask off so Got to be careful of that. I can see a dent on the roof that I missed right there. Oh well, can go with the bug track. Well, you don't need to keep watching me unmask the car, I don't think. Well, we've got the windows unmasked. We've got to leave the doors masked up because there's no reason to peel those away because it's behind the wind lace. So there's no you know, interference with paint that's got to be seen. And I've got to paint the bottom of the car yet, so might as well leave it in place. I removed around the windscreen. There's a bit here, a bit of jagged line. Um, this paint here, for example, I'm not sure if there's tape under it, if it's just um, paint, but I've put a razor edge there and I'll scrape that off once it's actually um, hard because there's still a couple of spots, particularly along here, where if I touch it, it will leave a mark. Um, not a bad looking sheen on there. It's not quite as matte as I, satin as what I thought it'd be, to be honest, but um, okay. Um, probably looks period correct in that regard. Uh, I didn't bother removing the tape along the bottom of the windscreen because I've still got to paint that area. Um, I overmasked just here, so I actually haven't painted part there, so I'll try and brush touch that 
at a later stage and I've taken off all around here and it's all come up pretty good pretty happy with it so um, we're moving along I'm just looking there's some screws in the top of this frame and same in the bottom there's some screws in this part here I don't think I'll be able to get this out because I think it probably holds the rubber in and I don't want to scratch the paint I know I could have done all this before but you know I didn't um, so I'll see if I can remove parts of this f to make preparation easier. But yeah, let me know. What do you reckon? Should I paint the window surrounds there and on the front doors white? There is a chrome strip around the windscreen. It's the only place there's a chrome strip. Not sure about the tailgate. Oh, okay, that just opened by itself. Oh, I did damage the paint down here. Just a little bit. That's where those fish eyes were and I don't, know, I don't know if it might have contacted it or something when I was closing it with a paper on it but oh well so yeah it's looking pretty good I'm happy with it you're wondering what colour the rest of it's going to be aren't you you'll just have to stay tuned I think you'll like it I will <laughs>